Hey guys, I'm recording today from my home office because I have an appointment actually right at the time we have 3D today, so I'm not gonna make it in to do live, but um, I'm also actually, I don't know if you can see behind me, poor little Tilly, I'm home with Tilly because maybe you've seen some of my Facebook posts. Um, Tilly, stay. <laughs> She is one hurting pooch, man. You can't see it as much now, but she has been in bad shape. In fact, I'm going to show you a little bit. Um, I'm going to take the phone through the house here and just show you. Um, we're not exactly sure what happened, but the vet actually thinks that Tilly might have sustained some kind of damage from a snare or some kind of animal trap. This is my backyard, and right behind those trees, um, I take these dogs out almost religiously every single day and we go to these backwoods where there's miles and miles of trails and uh, anyway so these kids that live behind us are um, constantly out there having a good time which should be the case but there's this one kid his name's Ricky <sighs> Ricky is um, constantly shooting things. He has a slingshot on a regular basis. I ran into him on the trail actually this summer. I said, Ricky, what are you doing, man? And he had a gun, a slingshot, I mean, every weapon under the sun. And uh, he said, well, I'm, I'm hunting stuff. And I said, well, like what? And he said, well, if it hops, it flops. And if it flies, it dies. So basically Ricky was like hunting anything. Um, I actually saw him slingshot a poor little rabbit and it went to the woods and he didn't even kill it. It was just half dead. So uh, I'm home with my poor Tilly and I really think that um, Ricky is the reason she is hurting. And I think it's because of some of his little makeshift snares that he left in the forest. Tilly got into one. And it's kind of funny because um, I wasn't meaning to use Tilly as a visual aid, but we're actually going to talk about snares today and traps. So uh, I'm going to resituate my camera and we're going to start talking about 3D today and it's called Fighting for Your Faith Disconnected. Okay, so first thing, since we didn't have a dance party today or anything like crazy and fun, um, I put a little test in the 3D video today. So during the course of the 3D video, you're gonna see little pictures, little video snippets of Tilly come up. And at the end, in your 3D worksheet, there's gonna be a little Tilly test, a visual test of the details of those videos. So fill it out and your teachers will send it to me and there'll be a couple prizes for the people who gave me the best details. So anyway, first I wanna start with talking about um, that snare thing, because I think it's super relevant. Again, it's a visual metaphor, which you guys know I like to use. And a snare is, um, there's d several different kinds, but it's basically a trap. Usually keeps the animal alive. It will grab the animal's paw, usually, and it can either do it by wire, entrapping them with wire, or it can clamp down on their paw, which is what the vet thinks she might have um, uh, gone through, because um, it looks like it was just severed all the way through. And again, it could have been Ricky. But anyway, I digress. So today, preparing for 3D totally convicted me. Um, every time I put these 3Ds together, I'm, you know, I'm preaching to the choir because this is something that I need for myself too. So uh, today we're talking about fighting for your faith and how this whole internet technology, social media, um, I'm putting it all into one category because I think you guys are living in a very connected culture and that's what, what we're talking about today. But what we're ultimately talking about is how this connected culture, in spite of the fact that we're connected, is actually the very thing that can be used to disconnect us or keep us disconnected from God. So we're going to talk about that today. First of all, let me be clear, the internet can be used for great things. I'm not telling you to stay off the internet. I, I'm not telling myself to stay off the internet. I mean, there's uh, there's great podcasts out there, Christian music, there's, um, there's research galore, there's information, amazing information we can access. Um, I do my whole Bible uh, on an app. First thing is, I'd be totally remiss if I didn't talk about the one thing that is really critical, and that's 
um, internet safety and making good choices. So just watch this video really quick. Girl, her name is Michaela. She's 13 years old. We've been talking on Facebook for the last couple of days, and we're supposed to meet up at the park later when her parents leave the house. I'm just waiting right now for her to get the text that her parents have left the house. So we just got a text. My parents just left. I can be at the park in 10 minutes. We're gonna go see if she comes in 10 minutes. We're gonna go right now, set up all the cameras, and uh, just got here. All right, we'll just wait, see what she says. She said, okay, I'll be there in five minutes. She's coming, yep. Michaela? Who are you? From Facebook. You remember? Michaela! Are you crazy? Are you out of your mind? First and foremost, let me just tell you, I I don't want to base my whole entire 3D today on that kind of scare tactic. And that's really what the guy was using was a scare tactic. Those parents were even involved. That stuff happens and so we have to talk about it. Actually, I just read a scripture this morning. This morning, this always happens when I'm preparing for 3D. And it says, say to wisdom, you are my sister and to insight, you are my relative. I mean, don't put your name and your personal information out there. If you put your birth, birth date on your social media network, don't put your year on. Um, don't show where you go to school. That's just not a good idea. And I know that you guys don't have to be reminded about this one, but here it is. So we're going to stick to Facebook and Instagram today and just talk about the real issue, the real snare, and here's what it is. The issue is seeking the approval of man more than God. That is the real issue. And as I've been researching this in all kinds of Christian circles and youth pastors, they're saying the same thing. Because the real issue is when we create something on Instagram or Facebook that portrays our lives in a way that is trying to gain the approval of man, we're flat out being dishonest, for one. And when we're on Facebook, like checking every five minutes who's, who's responded to our Facebook post or how many people have checked out what we've um, put on Instagram and I'm guilty. So I, I'm, I'm right there too. But when we're doing that, we are coveting man's approval. There's an interesting scripture, um, as I was researching and putting this 3d together in John 12, 42 and 43. Nevertheless, many of the authorities believed in him, but for fear of the Pharisees, they did not confess it so that they would not be put out of the synagogue for they loved the glory that comes from man more than the glory that comes from God. That's a dangerous thing. As I'm researching this, psychologists and professors all over the secular world and Christian world are saying the same thing, that our youth today, you guys, you guys, um, are being conditioned by this narcissistic need for approval. Here's what a professor from San Diego University said. I thought this was interesting. In today's culture of youth, you will find a pattern of grandiosity, need for admiration, an exaggerated sense of self-importance where the person believes they are special and require excessive admiration from others. If that is not the epitome of idolatry, I don't know what is. I mean, that's exactly how Lucifer got kicked out of, out of heaven. He wanted the glory all to himself and this culture of wanting attention, 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 and doing whatever it takes to get it and spending so much time getting it is really taking away from our relationship with God because uh, God wants the glory. He wants that. That's what we were created to do was to glorify him. I want you guys to get in your groups today and talk about some of these things, but I want to talk about one more venue first, and that is um, uh, YouTube. And let me just tell you, I love YouTube. In fact, I am constantly looking up little YouTube um, videos and I share them. Here's one that I love.
cool. I mean, it really seems like the whale is there, but obviously that's just, they said it's a hologram, but it's not. We need to put some accountability measures in place with YouTube. We need to ask God for the spirit of self-control in this venue. So if, if you're gonna post something, um, disable comments so people can't comment. Uh, try not to look at the comments underneath. I mean, let's face it, some of you guys, some of these Cornerstone students are sending me video of, of their songs and they're uploading them to YouTube so people can see them. And let's face it, Justin Bieber got recognized, he got noticed, he got discovered on YouTube. That's the truth. So YouTube is a popular and effective venue, but clicking on those, um, those other videos that are just trash, um, reading the comments that are just laced with expletives, it's not worth it. It's not worth the risk. So disable the comments. And if you really want to have some accountability with all of this networking and connected culture, get your computer out and, and have it on in front of people. This is really important part of fighting for your faith is having accountability. And that's something that we need to do on our own. Technology is just everywhere. I actually took a student out to Dutch Brothers the other day and she said, Mrs. Harrison, I got my phone taken away from my teacher because I was watching Netflix in class. I said, how can you even do that? And she said, um, it's, it's not that difficult, but the problem is I really feel addicted. I can't stop watching this one show. And um, you know, that's sad. Here's the truth about college freshmen. And this is not very long away from you guys. I know you're not thinking of college right now. The number one reason girls, freshman girls drop out of college is because of Netflix. They get sucked into Netflix. They get sucked into some show that they start binge watching and they drop out. For boys, it's videos. And that's the truth. So we have to have our, our own set of boundaries and filters and guidelines for ourselves. And that is the Holy Spirit because there's nothing good in us. It is only the Holy Spirit that is gonna bring about that kind of behavior. And we have to ask God to help us with that. Because of this study, because I'm uh, reading and reading scriptures and preparing for these three Ds, I was totally convicted about this one. So for me, um, this helps me. It helps me to be more accountable. Um, even asking for forgiveness for Ricky. I've decided that I am going to take a pause. Because Tilly was involved, I'm gonna call it a pause. And it's gonna stand for pause all social media for a week. Social media is a weakness for me. So I'm gonna pause personally. I'm not asking you to do it, but get into your groups and see if that might be just one thing you could do to um, harness some self-control and access the Holy Spirit. And um, just watch how the Holy Spirit will give you what you need to, um, to stop being distracted, to stop um, spending so much time getting the attention on yourself. And uh, for me, I'm just going to take that time to really seek what God has for me. And um, I'd encourage you to do the same thing. So get in your groups and um, talk to each other and fill out that test after you've done your talk, okay? And teachers, grab those forms so that we can get them uh, PDF'd off to me and I'll, uh, I'll bring a prize in next time. And we are having a dance party next time in Sierra and Sarah. We're going to lunch. Bye, guys. Yeah.